Besides being beautiful, there are many benefits of storing your water in copper. Before I get into all the benefits of copper and um, the reasons that I choose to use copper to store my water in, I'm going to go over some of the things that you want to look for if you do decide to purchase um, a copper vessel. Um, there's many out there. This is like a water bottle and it has a lid that goes to it. Um, and then you also have like big copper vessels. Um, this is a fairly small one compared to some they, you know, they can hold gallons and gallons of water. Depending on your needs and depending on the size of your household, um, I would buy accordingly to that. When you are looking, you do want to make sure you get a 100% food grade copper. You don't want it mixed with anything else and you don't want it plated with anything else. Um, sometimes on the outside they might be plated, but inside is really the most important. You don't want anything um, plated or um, mixed with your copper. So you're looking for 100% food grade copper. And also if you get like the little short mugs and glasses and they have handles on them, you want to make sure all the handles or different parts that are added on to your vessel or your bottle are welded, not riveted or used any type of other metal. And they should all be, you know, a solid piece. Um, you'll see really pretty ones too sometimes that have intricate engraving on them. Those are probably not real copper. Uh, real copper is not magnetic either. So if you do order one and you get it home and you're just not really sure if it's 100% food grade copper, um, it will not be magnetic. It'll also be very, very soft. Um, copper is uh, pliable with your your bare hands if it's thin enough. Um, and it's it's just a very, it's a delicate soft metal. I've got this, you know, this, my bottle and the pot are both hammered, but I've got a big dent in this thing and there's there's a few of them from, this just goes with me most places um, besides our air which I'm sure if they could figure out a way to market that they would um, and make money off of it but having to pay money for water that we need to survive is is just mind-blowing but anyway back to the copper um, I don't like buying it if I'm out so I normally will always take um, my copper water pitcher with me I'll make some fruit infused water or something like that to take with me um, if I am going to be out and about, not home, because I don't want to be forced into buying water that I don't know what's in, I don't know what's in it, and also I just don't want to pay for it. So this comes with me quite often. So I do wash the outside of this and the lip of this quite a bit, um, but you don't want to wash your copper vessels um, on a regular basis. You do want to rinse them with warm water and dry them, but that should be it in as far as the outside goes as well. A good copper vessel this size should run you roughly around $65 to $80. Um, you'll see them for more, uh, you might even see them for less. Now if they get really cheap, they're probably not 100% food grade copper. And the same goes with your bottle. Most of your um, your water bottles are going to run you probably around $30 to $40. The larger one of these um, do upwards, they're well over $100. Then do your research on it. Get the size that's going to be sufficient for you and your household. This is plenty of water for us to drink in a day. Plenty. Because um, I have this and this. So this is our drinking water for the day. And I also keep filtered clean water, refrigerated in glass. I don't store water in anything else but in glass and in copper. I try to stay away from plastic as much as possible with all my food and just the things that I buy. What you want to do is take clean filtered water, room temperature. You don't want to use cold water and you don't want to use hot water. You definitely do not want to use hot. Hot is worse than the cold. It will damage the molecular structure of the copper and it is going to make more copper leach out. And this goes for cooking too. If you have any cooking utensils or a copper pot or a pan that you use to cook with, you should not be cooking with that on 
high, high heat. If you do decide to use that to cook with, it should be cooked very low and very slow. Um, but heating copper, just like any other metal, or getting it cold is gonna change the molecular structure of it. But when you get it hot, or if you drink hot liquids, if you have like a little cup or anything like that, um, you put hot liquids in it, you're going to allow copper to leach out more into your water, and you don't want that. What you want is it from, for it to naturally do it. So you fill it up overnight, um, at least six to eight hours. Copper has been proven to be the only antibacterial material there is. It's naturally going to clean your water. Now, it's not going to clean pharmaceuticals and toxic chemicals and those things out of your water, but it is going to take out um, microbes, fungi, bacteria, and even E. coli, salmonella, has copper has been proven to kill those. So if you're drinking water out of your tap and that's all you're doing, I highly recommend that you at least get a copper vessel. I really think you should have it water filtered first. And I do filter my water at home. I don't buy filtered water. I do not buy um, packaged water. The only packaged water that I buy is coconut water. Um, so make sure you're filtering it and you're cleaning it. There's, there's many ways to do it. Find what's best for you. But once you put it in there, it's, it's already, it's going to work. It's cleaning your water and it is naturally alkalizing your water. So if you buy alkalized water um, from a store, especially if it's water that's been alkalized and then um, depending on how it's actually alkalized, I doubt it was alkalized naturally, which would be water rolling over or flowing over rocks and things like that and picking up trace minerals and elements on its own. Um, I doubt that's what you're buying. Um, you're probably buying some just regular old river water um, that they say is alkaline. And then it's been put in a plastic bottle and it's sat somewhere for who knows how long. So I don't know if I'm really sure if that water is really even alkaline anymore. You might want to do your research on it. But this will naturally alkalize your water. And another thing too, like with the spout, you want to make sure you check to see how the spout is then attached in the inside and what it's actually made of in the inside because you just want food grade um, copper really touching your water. As you can see the lid, everything is one solid piece. You don't want anything that's got a lot of seams or it's been put together in different pieces, but I could probably take and squeeze this water bottle if I wanted to and change the shape of it. That's how soft it is and that's how you'll know if it's real copper. You do want to stay away from the cheap copper in copper that is not 100% food grade and because that is the copper that is going to make you sick and leach out too much copper um, or other materials and metals, whatever else it was mixed with and made with into your body. So you don't want that. That can cause a lot of problems and having too much copper in your body can cause problems. Um, it can cause your stomach upset, nausea, diarrhea, uh, there's quite a few, there's a long list of it. So, and then for caring for it, like I said, you do want to rinse them. You can use a mild soap. I uh, would, you know, like a natural mild soap, a soft cloth, and you can wash these, you know, wash them off. Especially my water bottle, I wash off more frequently because I do drink out of that and it goes places with me. So I don't want the bacteria or anything from my hands or my mouth contaminating the water. And that goes with water bottles too. If you are someone who drinks from a water bottle, um, whether it be a plastic disposable one or one that um, you can just refill, you know, like one of these, this type of a water bottle, you want to make sure that you're always cleaning the outside of it very well and around the mouth because that's probably where you're going to get sick from. Um, I know our water is disgusting, but I don't think people realize that they drink out of this and they keep refilling it, but they don't think about the bacteria from our mouth and from our hands that are sitting on this too. So you do want to make sure that you're washing or wiping them. Um, 
washing them and wiping them down. When you clean your copper, you want to do that about every three to six months as far as actually like polishing, cleaning it. And there's a few different ways that you can do it. Um, I don't recommend using any type of a chemical on it. I'm against chemicals anyway, but um, you don't need chemicals to clean. This is a natural product from Earth. Use other natural products from Earth to clean it. But you can use a um, lemon juice and salt. And you can actually just take um, the lemon itself. You can put salt on here and use that to clean your copper. You can make a paste with baking soda and lemon juice or baking soda and vinegar and just take, you know, make you a paste of it. Use a soft cloth and rub it on or use a lemon rind, either way. But these are the only things that you want to be using to clean your copper. You can also use um, tamarin paste or make a paste with tamarin. And once you um, polish them, you can let it sit for just a few minutes. You don't want the lemon or uh, salt or that sort of stuff really sitting on here for a long period of time. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna polish it and rub it and um, very gently. And then you'll just rinse it and dry it. That's it, that's all you have to do to take care of your copper. But um, a little bit of tarnish is, is normal and actually if it doesn't tarnish, you probably don't have copper. So um, it's completely normal and I don't really mind it. It's more so the inside that you kind of want to be concerned about as far as you know your tarnish and things like that but you're just going to do the same thing on the inside and clean it and you can see it probably needs to be cleaned I'm mean, it's it's been a few months but it's I've got some green coming off of it which is uh, patina is when copper oxidizes and you may know or you may not know but like the Statue of Liberty is made of copper and that's why it's green because it is oxidized and it's covered it's patina same way with like um i know here where i live our courthouse has the copper top of dome on it and it's green you'll also see um, a lot of door handles and things like that made out of copper or copper brass mixture and it's more than just for the eye because copper is antibacterial. So if you think of a doorknob and touching it, it's pretty good thinking whoever thought of that one to use copper for doorknobs and door handles. Just another little tidbit of probably useless information, but it does make a lot of sense uh, why you would use copper for a, a handle and those sorts, those sorts of things. The National Cancer Society has even come out and said that the copper water or your alkalized copper water is actually good for cancer or, or bad for cancer because the antioxidants help fight off free radicals in your body. You don't make money off healthy people. You make money off sick people and they usually do not want you treating and diagnosing and taking care of yourself. So I think it's pretty strong um, words for the National Cancer Society to come out and say that because most of the time they are promoting things that are bad for you. Now on to some of the health benefits and um, reasons that I think are beneficial and that you should choose to store your water and drink it from copper. And water is the only thing that should be going in these. I know there's cocktails that are made um, and they're served in the little copper mugs and that that's a bad idea. That is how you get extra copper leached into your system. You don't want lemon juice um, or anything really acidic sitting in here. I know I said to clean it with it, but you're just cleaning it and then you're rinsing it off. It's not actually staying on here because it's gonna damage it and it's gonna cause more copper to leak out. So only water, only water goes in them, nothing else. Don't drink anything else out of them. And I really don't really recommend drinking much of anything else but water. It's really all you need. But beyond just the benefits of it cleaning your water, there is such a thing as a copper deficiency. And it's just as real as an iron deficiency. And actually, um, 
they kind of go hand in hand with each other. You need copper to help you absorb iron and you need iron to help you absorb copper. And just like all the other trace minerals that we need in our body, um, you have to keep a good balance. I was someone who was diagnosed um, with anemia. I have fought and battled it my whole life. I was quite surprised when I found out the side effects of low copper in your body. And that is anemia, low body temperature, um, you can have more broken bones or bone loss, um, low white blood count or a low white blood cell count, um, irregular heartbeat, pale skin, thyroid problems and cause tremors, um, tingling, numbness, fatigue, um, vision loss. So it is just as real as an iron deficiency. And for me, I don't think I really had so much of a deficiency. It was more of, of an absorption issue with me. Since starting this, and also I follow a very high, high raw food diet, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time I'm eating food naturally from earth untouched. So I credit that in um, my mindset to a lot of my health. But even after I changed my diet and I healed from so many things, I suffered from RLS. I suffered from RLS very, very badly. I wanted to pull my hair out. I could scream. If anyone's ever suffered from RLS, I feel for you. My heart goes out to you because it's, it's an awful thing to suffer from. And it's an awful thing to suffer from and then try to explain to somebody how just debilitating and annoying it can be and just keep you from sleep or just being restful period um, if you don't know what it is uh, restless leg syndrome is you're fine if you're up moving around but as soon as you go to sit or relax and especially in the evening or like to go to bed it was almost like the worst tingly feeling and numbing feeling um, like say if your leg or something like that falls asleep and you get that real bad tingling it's almost kind of like that but not really you almost can't even explain it it's on the, the feeling is just unexplainable but it will drive you absolutely bonkers and so why they call it restless leg syndrome is because you start moving your legs. So what I would do is like I would be in bed and I would just have my feet and just just go. And, just, and it's really annoying to your partner or whoever is trying to like watch TV with you or anything. Like I would be sitting on the couch and just rubbing my feet across the carpet because if not, I had to get up and move around. And sometimes I would. I'd be up at night just up and walking because I couldn't sleep because of restless leg syndrome. Uh, I'm not real big on supplements. And I'm not real big on taking things that uh, any type of a pharmaceutical or anything. So I refuse medicine for it. I didn't want it. I thought I didn't suffer from this my whole life. There's got to be a way to fix it. Um, and when you look up um, RLS and the symptoms of it, you see, you notice a lot of times iron. They talk about low iron, low iron, low iron. I don't think I've ever come across anything saying low copper or copper deficiency. I really had to dig in and do research and I really recommend you to do research. I don't expect you to go, oh, well this lady says I should drink out of copper so I'm gonna do it. I want you to research because I didn't wake up one day and go, I'm gonna put my water in a copper pot and that sounds like a good idea to me. I did a lot of research, but since drinking my water out of a copper vessel, and also, I did find a supplement that was 100% organic and um, from a really, really good company to also help absorb with my iron. And I also will do some beet juice um, and a few other things because I felt like that was something I really had to fine tune in that I had issues with. My restless leg syndrome is gone. I do not suffer from it anymore at all. So I can't say that, yes, it's definitely the copper or it was the supplement. I have stopped taking that supplement now. I do not take it anymore. I took it for about a year. Um, and it wasn't just a regular old iron pill that you go pick up from the pharmacy. 
Um, it wasn't prescribed. It was a supplement. It was over the counter, but it is a very good quality one. So if you are going to take any type of a supplement or anything, please do your homework on it and find out how they how they manufacture it, how they actually get whatever it is that you want, the extract of whatever you're looking for, um, and see if there's another way to do it naturally. I eat a lot of high iron and high copper foods. Leafy greens um, are are high up there. Also, nuts and seeds are high up there. So I felt like I was eating enough, but for some reason I was still suffering from all these ailments. And I believe it was because I didn't have a proper balance of minerals and I was low in copper and I was low in iron. And until I got that balance of them, um, I didn't get better. So now I don't suffer from restless leg syndrome at all anymore. And <laughs> it's great. If, if that's all it did for me, I drink it every day. Because like I said, if you've suffered from that, it is absolutely just awful. It's horrible. It is a horrible, horrible, horrible thing to have. And like I said, there's just as many side effects from having too much copper as there is from having not enough copper. But they are quite different from each other. Some things that copper... Um, can also help with your immune, immune system. It supports red blood cells. Um, it's antibacterial. It aids in digestion. Um, it is actually critical for your blood cell formation. You need it to absorb your iron. It, it'll decrease wound healing time. It's good for your bones and cardiovascular. And actually, I believe copper is stored in your bones, so that makes sense. Um, it keeps your nerve cells healthy. It's great for you. It helps balance out your thyroid. And that was something else I had a lot of problems with, or thyroid and hormonal problems. Um, it is very stimulating to the brain. It is also very good for your skin. It helps in producing collagen in your body. And I'm not really sure what led me down the path of copper in the first place, but I had a lot of digestion problems and it does help very much so with digestion problems. And you are probably low in copper if you suffer from some digestive issues like um, Crohn's disease, uh, cystic fibrosis, and celiac disease. Uh, or if you're having other types of abdominal and discomfort and digestion issues, might be something that you want to look into. A lot of times people just, you don't hear much about copper. It's always iron, iron, iron. I know when I went through my pregnancies, that was almost one of the first things I would go in and within a few months, my doctor would always be like, well, you're pale again. You're looking really pale. I bet your iron's low. And he was right. My iron probably was low, but I bet my copper was low too, because that is when I've actually developed RLS um, was about almost 18 years ago when I was um, pregnant, I was sitting there one day and all of a sudden my feet were just like tingling and weird. And I would also get numbness in my toes. And I felt, I thought at the time that it was because I used to hunt and <laughs> you get kind of cold sitting in a tree stand. And there had been many times that my toes got cold and if you've ever had like frostbite or something, it takes a long time to heal. And it may have been from that. And this may have helped heal that too as well um, with the numbness that I felt in my toes, especially if I did get cold. Um, I could almost not feel the toes on my left foot at all when I got cold. And I don't have those issues anymore. So I hands down I swear by eating a raw food diet, or eating as close to nature as you possibly can, cutting out processed food, and cutting out um, fats and sugars, um, candies, animal products, oils. I, I'm a firm believer in all that and how much it's helped me heal. But even after those things healed, like, you know, just from eating foods, I was still struggling with things. And I attribute that to a low iron and low copper levels. I feel now my iron is good and um, maybe with the copper, it's helping me absorb it better is what I figure with my food. Um, I've always been an extremely pale person too. Um, and that's another big sign of copper deficiency is if you're pale. 
So if you hear somebody talking about iron deficiency, if your doctor's, you know, pretty sure you're deficient in iron, you might also want to look into copper. They kind of go hand in hand together. Copper is also 100% recyclable material, um, just the same as glass. So that's generally what I try to go for. And glass is non-porous. It is made from sand and limestone and uh, ash. So just try to stay as close to nature as possible. Copper is the most conductive material or metal that there is. And water also has energy and memory. I really suggest you research it and look it up. It's fascinating and it's just, where we live is a very magical place, I guess is the best words to use. It is perfectly designed. Um, nature is perfect. It's when we get involved, we seem to mess it up pretty, pretty well. So your water is energy and your water has memory. So wherever your water has traveled from, it has traveled a long distance. It's probably had a rough travel. And who knows where it was before it came out of your faucet. So when I fill my copper pots up in the evening, I take the time to be thankful for it and to appreciate it. And I hold and touch my copper and I transfer my positive energy into my water. So it is positively charged, alkaline, clean water. I think that's very important. Your water can feel good energy, just like anything else can. Just like if somebody walks in, say you're at work. And somebody walks in, they don't have to say one word to you. You know if they're in a good mood or a bad mood. Your, that energy will hit you like a brick wall. Your water's the same way. Everything is energy. Everything is energy. Everything around you, everything you touch, everyone you come in contact with, and everything that you come in contact with is energy. And our energy is the only thing that we can control ourselves. You want to put out good energy. You want to receive good energy. So I give my water good energy so it is positively charged. Um, and probably people will think I'm a wackadoo for it. And that's okay. I'm fine with being a wackadoo because I am a healthy wackadoo. And I would much rather be healthy and feel good and um, not have RLS, not have numb toes, not be pale not be anemic anymore, um, and not have digestive issues anymore. So I will gladly hold the title of a wackadoo, but I love my water and I'm thankful for it. And I am thankful for everything that comes in contact with my body and especially what's going inside of my body. So I think it's very important that you love your water and it needs to sit and rest before you drink it anyway, but it should sit in a copper vessel for at least four hours, but more six to eight hours or overnight. And that's gonna allow the water to undo itself. It takes a, a couple, about an hour or so for water to really undo itself of the, the hormonal memory and trauma. It went through pipes or filtration system or whatever else to come out of your faucet and to be put in your glass or whatever you're drinking it out of. So let it sit for a minute. There are scientific studies. This is not something I'm making up. Research it and take a few minutes and just appreciate it and love it and give it good energy because then in turn, that's what it's going to do for your body. It's going to give you good energy. And that's what we want. We want good energy for everybody and for everyone that we come in contact with, or at least I know I do. That's the most important thing to me. Um, besides just a copper vessel and changing your lifestyle or actually changing your diet and what food's on your plate, your lifestyle needs to be peaceful. If you're not living a peaceful lifestyle and you don't have peace of mind and you're not at ease with yourself and your decisions, you're not going to heal. Healing is much more than just water or food. 
you have to change your mindset. So that's why I said I'm fine with being a wackadoo. I'd rather be a wacky person than a sick person. And I don't think there's anything wrong with somebody who just wants to be loving and caring. So beyond just what's on your plate and beyond just what's in your glass, make sure you're thankful for everything that you have. Thankful for the roof over your head. Thankful for that food and thankful for that water. And let it know you're thankful. And this doesn't have to be a prayer or a spiritual thing. It just needs to be thankful for what it is. So give your water a great big hug. So it knows everything's going to be okay now. It's had a rough life getting to where it is. But it's, it's settled and it can be at peace and have good energy. And in turn give you good energy.